so much as um, an hour-long lecture. <laughs> so, so I'd like to give that now. <laughs> no, um, specifically, I, I, I took issue with something that was said by um, the esteemed Paula Kirby, whose work I really enjoy. But she made a comment that she felt that there was no problem with sexism in the atheist community because she's never experienced any sexism in the atheist community. Um, in the skeptical movement, we refer to that as an argument from ignorance. And in the feminist community, we refer to it as an argument from privilege. I'm, I'm really genuinely happy that she hasn't experienced any, any sexism. But I don't think that that's a proper basis to make a judgment on whether or not there is a problem with sexism and atheism. Um, she also later said that she didn't think that there was some great conspiracy to keep women out of the atheist community. Well, I don't think anyone thinks that. I think that's a bit of a, a, a straw person, if you will. Uh, I, I think that, unless you want to consider the, the patriarchy in general as a conspiracy, which I don't, I don't think that there's um, any club that's getting together, uh, how can we get less women involved? No, that's, that's not happening. But there is an issue with sexism, and I thought that because the topic of, of this panel is communicating atheism, I thought that maybe I could offer my perspective as someone who communicates atheism while being a woman. Because it, it differs from Paula Kirby's experience, and I think it's important that you know that her experience isn't my experience. So a few weeks ago, I, I, I have a podcast called The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. And, um, no, you're right not to applaud. <laughs> that was the right decision you all made. Uh, no, uh, 
and, and if you're not familiar with it, you know, it's mostly it, it's skeptical topics, science topics, but we do occasionally discuss secularism, things like that. I talked about, very briefly, about uh, th these talks I've been giving recently in the States at atheist conferences, in which I describe the religious right in the US and their war on women that they've been waging very recently. To give you just a quick idea, in the first three months of this year, state legislatures in the US passed 916, or not passed, sorry, introduced 916 bills that restricted reproductive rights. Um, amongst those that passed were, were some really horrific things like um, abstinence only education must be taught in one of the states, I believe it's South Carolina, um, unless the school petitions the government to teach something called abstinence plus, which is a way for religious conservatives to, to get abstinence only education into the schools while throwing in something about condoms at the end. Um, also some very serious restrictions on abortion, um, and also on, on general access to contraception. Um, they're allowing pharmacists, for instance, to not give contraception to women who ask, ask them for it, which, um, and, and you know, they're protecting the pharmacist's jobs. Um, so saying that they're allowed to, to take a religious exemption, um, which to me is like saying a vegetarian priest can, you know, refuse to give the, the, the flesh and blood of Jesus <laughs> and still keep his job. <laughs> if you can't do the job, don't, don't do the job. Um, so I, I spoke briefly about that on, on the podcast and I, I encourage people in the audience who are concerned about separation of church and state when it comes to things like prayer in schools and, and creationism, I encourage them to learn more about what's happening to women and to get involved and to help fight the religious right. So then the emails started coming in. The, the first email was uh, addressed to the female on the podcast. <laughs> My name is at the top of the show. Everybody calls me by that name. It's Rebecca. <laughs> uh, it's on the website. But it was addressed to the female, and um, he was wondering why I was encouraging people to kill babies. Uh, he was an atheist. Um, an another, another email I got uh, was addressed not to me, but to the men of the podcast. Uh, it was basically, dear guys, won't one of you do something about that Rebecca? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the first time this, that I get those emails all the time. They're not addressed to me, they're addressed to the men, asking them to shut up that girl. Uh, and it it's most often happens when I talk about uh, feminist issues, women's rights issues, things like that. Um, I'll also note briefly that that email was terribly misspelled, grammatically incorrect, and ended with, uh, you should all just grow up and then, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> so my response was simply, <laughs> um, thanks for your email. It takes a lot of courage for a semi-literate adult male <laughs> to quote Spider-Man <laughs> and then tell us to grow up. <laughs> Those emails were rare, but they're not. I get a couple of them a month, usually uh, more if I'm talking about women's issues. Um, they, um, they're, they're extraordinary, some, they range in, in sexism, <laughs> from extraordinarily sexist to this is probably kind of sexist. Um, and, and it's quite disheartening to get these emails from people who actually agree with me on 98% of everything else that's important, um, but not on this. Then there are the emails from the people who seem to agree with me 100% of the time. There are, I, I get fan mail, and a certain percentage of that fan mail is um, graphically sexual. Um, <laughs> and it's, you're laughing, I hope, out of a little bit of discomfort. <laughs> and if you're not uncomfortable, I'm going to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, because some of these emails do describe in graphic detail what these men would like to do to me sexually. These are from the people who agree with me and they think they're complimenting me by, by sending me these emails, these uh, tweets, um, YouTube messages, things like that. So these are from atheists uh, and they don't necessarily understand that they're being horribly misogynistic but they are, because misogyny isn't something that's just relegated to religion. Um, religion can certainly bring it out and it can strengthen it, 
but it's a cultural problem. And even atheists, even rational people, haven't necessarily rationally looked at their own ideas of, of gender and equality and sex. So that's one of the things I like to do on Skeptic. That's one of the things that Skeptic as a website stands for, is it's a place where we combine uh, skepticism and atheism and secularism and humanism and feminism. And through that, we hope to sort of let people know about what their privileges are and how they can help be more welcoming to women, how they can get rid of the biases they hold that they might not even realize they hold. So that's what it's like to deal with uh, other atheists as, as an outspoken atheist woman. Um, and of course, there's also, I should mention, uh, the contact I get from people who disagree with me even on the atheism, uh, the contact I get from religious people. Um, I'm sure we've all heard uh, Richard reading his amazing uh, hate mail, which is hilarious, uh, which I should mention is actually my cell phone ring. <laughs> walking to the grocery store and suddenly my purse goes, you suck. <laughs> I hope you get hit by a bus. <laughs> by a church van. <laughs> so uh, the hate mail I get, um, obviously we all get some pretty terrible hate mail, but I'll just mention briefly that as a woman, a lot of the hate mail I get isn't just violent. Uh, I do get uh, the death threats and, you know, standard sort of hate mail like that. But I also get a tremendous amount of threats from religious people that involve rape. Um, a huge amount, probably more than the death threats, are the threats of rape. Um, whether they're threatening to rape me or they're just saying that somebody should, because you'll probably be better off. Um, they come in all of the time. And it's incredibly damaging. So I just wanted to add my voice to, you know, the earlier panel I thought was really great, and I thought it was a great message to tell women that, yeah, we, you do need to speak out, and you do need to stand up, but we also have to acknowledge what you're going to be facing when you stand up. You're going to be facing, you may be facing, I, I mean, obviously not every woman has these problems. Um, it depends on probably what media you're using. Um, don't go on YouTube. Just, just don't do it. Um, <laughs> And, and, and I'm hoping that Aaron can maybe speak more to that later. Um, but, uh, but we do need to acknowledge, acknowledge the fact that women in our community do take a risk by standing up and speaking out. And when we acknowledge that, we can help build a better support basis for them so that when they start getting these terrible emails, you know, when I was getting them, I was alone, and I would cry a lot about it. Until the other guys on the podcast started speaking up and saying, you know, these emails are terrible. Did you notice how terrible these emails are? <laughs> and I'm like, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so I, I, I just want to encourage you all to support one another and to support the women in your lives and to, uh, to know that, that it is a problem and to maybe even watch your own language and your own behavior to, to try to root out any, any, any biases that might be lurking within you. So that's, that's all we've got.